So I've just been testing out this, the new Cleveland Zipcore wedge. Test it around the green and it feels great. It spins like crazy. Out of the bunker, it's very, very versatile. It's a very good wedge. And I was gonna do a full review video about it. But I must admit, as much as I really like this wedge, it's no different to any of the Cleveland wedges I've tested in the past. So I thought, you know what? Let's do a bit of a fun video. I've tried this once before on Facebook where I played a hole with just a pitching wedge. Well, today I'm gonna play three holes with just a sand wedge. I'm gonna use this Cleveland zip core to do it. So you might be thinking, why am I doing this video? Well, firstly, it's just a bit of fun. To play golf with one club is quite novel. Obviously, normally you get 14 clubs, you get loads of options. But just taking one club on the golf course does teach a little bit. It's like, in the past, I've played with a seven iron on its own. I've played with a one iron. So I thought, well, why not play with a sand wedge? Because it can teach you how to manipulate certain shots and that can only be a good thing for your game. But mainly, let's be honest, it's just a bit of fun. <laughs> Okay, here we go, playing golf with just a sand wedge. I'm using a 56 degree sand wedge for this challenge. As I mentioned earlier, I have actually done something similar on Facebook before where I made a par just using my pitching wedge on a par five. And I was gonna start with a par five, but I thought that's ridiculous. Don't do anything so stupid. So I'm gonna end with a par five. I'm gonna start here on the 14th hole, the par three. I'm gonna then play a par four and then finish on the 18th hole and every shot I'm hitting is gonna be with this, just a sand wedge. What I'm not gonna massively do is try and just smash the ball as hard as I can. What I'm trying to do is manipulate the loft a little bit, try and actually hit professional golf shots in this fun challenge. Right, let's go. Oh, I've struck it pure. Get up there. Front edge. All right, we're putting. We are on the green in the first hole of the challenge of just using a sand wedge. So first put on this par three, birdie put. I'm gonna thin it basically. I'm gonna use the front edge of the club. It's like a, it's a, a shot I've played in the past, not on purpose, but like a bit of a belly wedge. I'm gonna try and thin it slightly right to left. Come on, let's get it close. Oh, kind of topped it a little bit, but it's done all right. We've got a chance for par. Okay, right to left. Come on, I just need to thin it correctly. Get it right in the middle of the golf ball for par. Par on the first hole. Let's go. That was good. So some of you might notice I've not got a glove on. It wasn't on purpose. I've just left my glove in my golf bag and seen that I've just brought one club out. I have to go gloveless for this challenge. It's a strong first start. It's a second hole, I've come to a short par four. It's under 300 yards, and I'd normally tee up driver here and give it an absolute smash, try and get close to the green, if not on the green, and then chip around the green. Um, it's gonna be a different story when I'm only hitting it about 100 odd yards. But I think if I can get there, I'm not gonna tee it up actually. If I can get there in, if I can get close in three, on the green, I should be able to definitely. There's still a decent chance for par. I said, I think the real challenge is gonna come on the next one. It's a par five, back into wind. <laughs> um, there's a bunker down there, but I'm gonna stay left of that. And uh, no excuse for missing the fairway on this hole. Unless I don't reach. Unless I don't reach. Oh, I don't know if I've reached the fairway. I went up in the air and didn't really get any distance. Mm, that's made things interesting. So there's a benefit of just playing with one club. It's nice and light, I don't have to carry anything around. Negative, this is an embarrassingly short tee shot on this hole. I would never hit it here. I'm gonna hit it quick so nobody sees me because they don't know I'm only using one club. Let's get it back down the fairway. Oh, that's nice. That'll set up a nice third shot into the green. Yeah, perfect position. You can't believe this. At the moment, the fairways at the Marriott are pristine, but my second shot here, I can't actually believe this, has finished there in a horrible, nasty little divot that either somebody's not replaced or a bird or something's flipped over to get some worms. So I am hitting from there. 
not, a, not ideal. I was hoping for a much better situation, but I'm 90 yards away to this flag, so it's gonna be a full shot. And actually, quite nicely timed. If you need a video to help you get out of a divot like that, it's actually my previous video, one of them. So I'll link it in the corner. Right, let's see if I can take my own advice. Let's see if I can still stick it close after finding a divot. Oh, spin hard. Oh, it's gone big. I've absolutely airmailed it. I took the right connection, but I hit it too hard. It's through the green. I'm going to have to chip back. Oh. I thought I was going to be good then as well. Okay, final hole, par five. And just looking at the yardages here, I think I'm gonna go off the yellows. I think that would be fair, seeing that I've uh, limited of how far I can hit it. By the way guys, if I par this hole, you have to like this video. I think that's only fair. Right, let's see how I get on. So I did say I'm gonna play professional shots, but you know what? I think it's time to actually try and smash one. I think to get on the fairway, I've got to hit one about 140 yards. So I'm gonna try and absolutely muscle one down there. probably the longest one so far and I still don't think I've hit the fairway. <laughs> So two things. First off, I cannot believe I've just hit that second shot into the rough, albeit only just off the fairway. I shouldn't be missing the fairway. Second, I'm 230 yards away to the green. In theory, two full shots with this club will get me there. So there's still a definite chance for par. Uh, let's just make sure I put myself in a good position this time. So it comes down to this. I'm uh, 115 yards to the flag. So it's a, a nice full sand wedge for me, this. I've got to get up and down to make par. Pin is right at the back, so I just need to take a bit of spin off it. Let's hope we can get close and set up a par chance. Come on. Beautiful shot. Get up there. Stop spinning. Hey, listen, we're on the dance floor. We're putting, albeit with a wedge, we've got an outside chance of par. That's pretty decent. So as I'm coming up to the last green, got to be honest, I've enjoyed this little fun challenge. Just playing with one club definitely makes you become more creative, makes you think about the shots in hand. You have to manipulate shots. It's always good fun. This wedge is good. As I mentioned at the start, it's very similar to Cleveland wedges in the past. It's quite similar to, let's say, a Vokey wedge, certainly with the technology that have changed it. It is good, I like it. But will it help me make a par on this last hole? As I mentioned, if I make it, you've got to like this video, all right? If I make it, let's get 30,000 likes. Let's see what happens.